Welcome back to another episode of Inside Multifamily Access Control. Here today again with my friend Colin. Colin, how you doing? Doing well. Happy to be back. Awesome. Yes, you were, took took some time off, so I feel like we haven't. You know, we've gone for I don't know how many weeks now, like talking to each other every single week. So I, yeah. I missed you, and I, it's good to have you back. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks yeah. for coming back and not just you know deleting my email. I, I thought about staying on the beach for a couple extra weeks, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you at all. But uh, so, sorry, Damon. Apologies for the the banter. But uh, excited today to have Damon join us uh, from DAC. Damon, I'll have you introduce yourself and do your background and the rest of that. But uh, we wanted to have you come on today to talk about sort of your view of the marketplace. There's somewhat of a theme that these IMAX have turned into that, that we've had from before around uh, sort of the software side about access control data going more from just locking and unlocking. So having somebody like yourself who who comes in and is working with the access control and security industry, it's great to get perspective on that end. So uh, without further ado, thank you very much for joining us. And why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself and your company. You got an interesting background. I think it'd be great for everyone to hear it. Great. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, good to see you both. So a uh, little background. My name is Damon Mincer. I'm the founder and CEO of DAC. Uh, I, I don't come from the access control industry and I don't come from the uh, short-term rental or hospitality industry, but I do have a long career in the software and technology platform business. So uh, I've been in this industry for, you know, the better technology and platform business for, for 20 years. Uh, and, you know, uh, I started this company, DAC, uh, about two and a half years ago. And uh, DAC is a technology platform business. We say we're providing a post-booking platform. Uh, uh, for for lodging and for travel. So we're the platform for the post-booking economy. Uh, that's what we're doing, Lee. Uh, I can talk more about my background. Yeah, yeah. no, talk, talk to me about what does post-booking mean, sure. economy? Because that, that's a, it's an interesting way. And uh, so what does that mean? It's great. So once again, when I think, uh, when we think of the world today, you think about the, the world of Airbnb or OTAs or Expedia, uh, VRBO, right? They're in the business of booking, right? They're in the business of, generating bookings for operators. And, you know, we don't compete. That doesn't compete with Airbnb. We don't compete with a hotel's direct booking channel. We don't compete with an OTA. We're everything that happens post-booking, uh, creating a better experience for the guest and for the operator post-booking. Um, and that includes everything by providing a, we provide a smart middleware platform that we sell to operators, okay, that we sell to vacation rental operators, small hotels to use. It integrates with their PMS. That enables them to offer their guests a mobile-facing application. That mobile-facing application, once again, is everything post-booking. And things like check-in could be access control, IoT control, the ability for the operator to upsell or cross-sell the guest, uh, things to enhance their stay, like early check-in, late check-out, local experiences, et cetera. So we're everything that happens, we're post-booking right through the rest of the guest experience. That's how we think about that. Wonderful. And then when you think about the access control and smart lock side of that and, and sort of the interaction there, I mean, where, where, where does that intersect? And, uh, you know, the, on the important side of it, if you would, how important is it to the overall experience and, and how do you view it as, you know, to us, it's the centerpiece of like, that's the sun and everything else is the sort of revolves around it. But um, from you, I'm sure it's a moon uh, compared to the rest of it, but like, how, how does that, how does it work with, with the, in your view, uh, from a, an economy standpoint of your overall experience? Yeah, no, it's a great question, Lee. Uh, here, here's the way we think about it, right? Once again, our, our, our focus is in on providing, providing the best guest experience, right? We provide the best guest experience, create incremental revenue for the operator, right? How do we do that? And uh, look, the first thing you do is you got to get the guest to really download the application and, and interact with the application. And how do you do that? And you guys are in the access control space. It's not the world that I know, but I do think that access control is sort of the gateway to guest experience, right? That's sort of the one main, that's the impetus to get the guest to download the app. That's the thing that we've seen, right? If you can get the guest to say, look, you need this app, right? It, the app's gonna serve a lot of different purposes, right? The app's gonna provide product, local information, product guides, local recommendation, et cetera. But, sort of the, the killer app we've come up so, with so far is access control and right, you need the app to open the door. And I think that's why access control is such a gateway to the rest of the guest experience. That, that's 
I like that. I like that terminology of, of the, the gateway to, to the guest experience. I just um, came up with a comment in the last five minutes. So I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> absorb it myself and see what I think of it. But I thought, that, well, I, I'm glad, it, I'm glad it's resonating with you. So I, I hope so. So I like it, but, but that's also an interesting tie in of, you know, the, the app is an interesting aspect in, and talk a little bit about the thought process that went into that and, and how you do do that, because that's a key piece to the guest experience, yeah. but is everybody going to do it? I find it, you know, in the, in the, in the multifamily world, 12 month lease, that sort of thing. It's very easy. Download an app. They all, there's no challenge with it. Yeah. What do you run into in the, in the guest world where they don't want, you know, every time I stay here, I've got to download a new app and then there, and then there, how, yeah. How, did, how, did, how do you process that from a guest experience? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And look, I mean, look, we're at like a time of just like fantastic change, right? You got, talk about what's going on in technology from multifamily, but certainly technology in the world we play in, which is the world of lodging, travel, right? Short-term rentals and what's happening here, right? So what's happened in the world of short-term rentals? There's been a pandemic, right? A big shift in the way people have traveled, used vacations, right? It's less about sort of fly to locations, less about urban locations, less about big hotels. It's been more about sort of drive to locations, local destinations, um, vacation rental houses, things like that. Um, and so, right, so there's been this shift and you've also had a lot of people who've historically stayed at hotels who are now staying at vacation rental apartments or houses and what type of experience they expect. And look, one of the good things that I think is happening for DAC, but what's happening in the industry is, you know, the big hotel guys, Marriott and Hilton have sort of led the way here with pushing their own apps, whether it's the Hilton app or the Bonvoy app and sort of access control being part of that experience, right? Download the Bonvoy app, use that app at a, a Marriott hotel. Well, guess what? Now people who are staying at vacation rentals are saying, I actually like the same hotel-like experience when I go to a vacation rental in a lot of ways. And people, for many people, they're, they're new to vacation rentals. They're like, there's a lot of things I like about this, but I'd like to have some of this hotel-like experience as well. And we think that's sort of the real fit here. In fact, Colin, I think when we thought of DAC a few years ago, I really thought about DAC and this app and this technology really targeted towards sort of millennials, young travelers. That's who I thought was the sweet spot of people who really wanted to use this app. But What's happened with COVID, with the pandemic, and like I love this line by Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, how the pandemic just really accelerated the pace of technology adoption. And I think it's really true when you look at sort of now the average age, the demographic of people who are using walmart.com or how many grandparents are out there using Instacart today. I, I think this app and this tech that we're building for DAC is not just really relevant for millennials, but I think it's how everybody wants to interact. And look, I think if I... Who wants to go to a front desk, right? Like nobody wants to do that if I can do everything in the palm of my hands and uh, get all the access to all information about the unit, access control, IoT control. I think it's pretty compelling for the guest. So, yeah. So, you know, from your background that you've had, because you had some early success with PayPal and some of the yeah, sure. sort of traditional. Uh, uh, what, I, what I would call more software-based uh, businesses yeah. that have disrupted other markets and things like that. But so of that, so maybe talk a little bit about that. And then how are you, are you leveraging some of that into this area? Cause I mean, to be fair, there's been, I don't know how many apps when it comes to, you know, the, the, the Airbnb space or the hotel space and the rest of it. Right. But I, I got to believe you're going to try to leverage some of what you learned over there into here. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, look, I agree. Look, there's always lots of different tech companies trying lots of different strategies. And uh, look, uh, ultimately, right, uh, there will be a few winners and a lot of losers in any, in any space. And I've lived this my entire life. But look, what I will say is like, I, this is the business that I've, I've built and grown up in. The, the company that I co-founded was a company that ultimately became known as GSI Commerce. So starting, you know, the better part of 20 years ago, we built a technology platform, right, for retailers, right? Not dissimilar if you think about what we're doing today, but really for the vacation rental space. So industry that was in need of technology, you know, 15 or 20 years ago were retailers. They're out there trying to figure out ways to compete with Amazon. How do we do this? So we built a platform, a universal platform that retailers could leverage, okay? 
we licensed our uh, platform to them. And for the last 15 or 20 years, if you went online and shopped from Dick's Sporting Goods or Ralph Lauren or Major League Baseball or the NBA or the NHL, um, uh, PetSmart, it was GSI's platform that they were operating. We built the platform. Uh, they paid us a revenue share on what was sold through the platform. And these companies then didn't have to go build the technology themselves. They were able to uh, uh, use a third party solution like GSI. Uh, after building that company, we started it from scratch, just like DAC, started it from a true garage startup. Um, over the subsequent 10, 12 years, we built it into a big multi billion dollar business. We sold the company to eBay for $2.4 billion, Lee and Colin. Um, a number of years ago, I then spent five years, I was one of the top execs at eBay. I was chief business development officer at eBay. And so sort of had the platform experience selling this platform, right? A lot of similarities to what we're doing here at DAC, right? I'm not completely reinventing a playbook that I know works, but as opposed to doing what we're doing and selling it to retail, um, I don't love retail today. I think there's a monopoly called Amazon, but I think there's an industry that's ripe for technology disruption the way that retail had been 10 or 15 years ago. And I look and I think that lodging, uh, short-term rentals, et cetera, are pretty antiquated from a tech perspective and uh, don't really have the ability to build a lot of this tech themselves and need uh, third-party companies who can come in and provide solutions. So, so. That, that's, that's awesome similarities of, of kind of what you see there of this, this platform concept. And I think one of the pieces that <clears throat> our industry struggles with, I'll, I'll use the term struggle. I don't know if that's the right terminology or not, but the hardware software aspect, right? And, and this, this idea that we all recognize we've got to get to a platform model at, at some level, but we also have this requirement, frankly, at least currently it's a requirement for hardware. And, and so how do you how do you balance kind of delivering a platform with this this demand of of hardware, especially as it relates to access control being the gateway that you're looking for? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Colin. And it was interesting when I think as we were starting this business, I said, you know, we always look at like sort of what are some of the hurdles, what are the roadblocks that we're going to face? And I said, look, right. Are there smart locks? Are there smart, th like, is there tech in these units where we're trying to sell a platform? Does it exist today, right? Where are they sort of in that adoption curve? Where are these units? And like, you guys know this world infinitely better than I do. What I would say is I was, the industry seems to be accelerating faster than I expected even in terms of adoption of, of, of internet connected hardware devices. The industry seems to be um, accelerating faster. It sounds like it's been around for a while, but there seems to be sort of a, 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 a like pretty quick adoption right now as we're talking to these operators. I don't think I'm having to convince them that they need sort of smart hardware. They're just deciding which hardware they're going to use, et cetera. But I think they're all sort of generally getting there. The way I approach this is, look, and I think we've seen what's happened with, you know, Latch and their approach. And look, I, I, I'm just, I believe passionately sort of in a different direction, right? I think ultimately our product is a platform. We wanna be completely hardware agnostic. I don't think it's a winning proposition for us to go into any, uh, whether it's multifamily, short-term rental operator, vacation hotel and saying, look, you've gotta use these locks, right? You've gotta use this access control or this thermostat or this PMS. I'm like, look, we're hardware agnostic on the IoT front. I'm trying to be software agnostic on the PMS front. Um, I want to be this middleware player that connects all of it together. I think that's the model that I see most successful, right? As it relates to software, okay? Like disconnected from hardware, there is an exception called Apple, but there are not many companies like Apple out there in the world, right? But in general, right? A platform company, not that's integrated with hardware, but not dependent upon a specific hardware. And Colin, that's how I see like the future of this industry. And like the industry itself is just so fragmented. When I, when, if you look at the, the, the small, the SMB, the mom and pop operators we're talking to, these are small vacation rental operators. Some of them have 10 units they manage or 50 units or 70 units, right? And in many cases with, you know, they're not the owners of these units, right? You've got lots of different owners and they manage the units, try to come to them and say, centralize on one access control system or one thermostat just seems like a, you know, an uh, uh, unlikely outcome in this business. So. 
Yeah, it's interesting that the the fragmentation I for I think will be around for a while, and then figuring out how that how that ends and sort of consolidates, and if it does, and I don't know, maybe it is one of those things that it's forever sort of in, on that area. But you got to believe at some point there's going to be some level of, of sort of streamlining on that end, because yeah. especially from the sort of operational efficiencies of trying to you know otherwise it just makes it really hard to be really good at, yeah. at any, anything on that end and, and to drive it. So okay, Definitely. very cool. No, um, so it. <laughs> What is sort of if, if if you were to fast forward how many you pick the many years that you want sure. right? What, what does it look like to you? So I, I land in a city, I open up the app, it's my concierge, if you would. I think that's the term you use to, to everything that I need, and I can just sort of freely yeah. flow through. And whether it's a Marriott or yeah. you know Aunt Bessie's house by the lake, like it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm 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 in I'm in control. Is that I mean? I think that's one way to think about maybe it. Maybe it's not Aunt Bessie, but yeah, yeah, maybe Aunt Bessie's house. We'll see. I, she hasn't invited me in a while, but if she does, maybe we could all like we could use we could use that. To, you to should call her more often. She yeah. would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I, I think that uh, this industry is incredibly fragmented. There's you know myriad. There's so many different hotel brands out there today. Even like like there's so many different like vacation rental options and. Look, the way we think about that, we don't sell it this way today. We sell it as a SaaS tech platform that enables operators to give their guests, you know, a mobile application. The big grand idea here, right, is that DAC is a universal application that I can use any place, right? Um, and I think, Colin, you touched on this earlier, but, right, one thing the guest I completely agree with does not want is to download 10 different lodging apps every place they go, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a ridiculous concept. Why do I want this on my phone? I don't need like 20 different hotel apps and every different vacation rental telling me to download their own app, right? I don't think that works. DAC works, right? The more universal it becomes. So we have numerous PMS integrations, numerous access control integrations, right? You're able to download that DAC app once, register. And by the way, as long as uh, the next place you stay, we're integrated with their PMS and it's an access control that we're integrated with. You can use the DAC app. You know, we then the, the operator gets all this information about the consumer. The consumer has one app they can use everywhere. And look, we think about this as a lead, this sort of flywheel of demand. And you mentioned PayPal, but this is sort of a, a little bit of something I've taken out of my past experience at PayPal. We owned PayPal when we were at eBay. Right, we've got sort of a two-sided marketplace at DAC, right? We've got operators and we've got consumers, right? Today, we try to get operators to use DAC to get the consumer to download the app. We try to make the experience really compelling for the consumer. So any place the consumer goes, they're like, wow, I wish this place took DAC. They tell the operator, wow, I wish you took DAC here and we create this flywheel of demand. And I think that's how this thing ultimately really takes off. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, though, too, to see. And part of the reason why I wanted to have you come on and talk about this is that, you know, the the idea from a lock manufacturer side, we've ha we've been having a lot of stories with companies that are, you know, going to create the next best sort of experience application for a long time. And my fear is, as, as an industry, um, we, we've and, and, and frankly, historically, it was probably too early and, yeah, and, and there wasn't as much success. The marketplace maybe wasn't ready for it, whatever the reasons that are there. But I believe though, like you said, there's accelerations happen of adoption and and, and the markets have shifted. And my, my hope is, is that we almost as an industry need to like reset our brains on sort of these interactions that we had and sort of come to the table with them as um, uh, a sort of a new eye opener to, to, to what, what's happening right now, because that that experience side of the end user and the blurring lines of the consumer side into the commercial, like all that stuff is just rapidly changing on that point that I think it's, it's important that we, there's, there's new, there's new blood, there's new people, there's new thoughts that are coming into it. And, and there's an opportunity as well as the industry itself needing to really get itself, itself, I don't know, its point of view uh, like of what it's going to do with this versus looking at it as I think last week, my newsletter was about this, but this idea that this isn't about integrations anymore. This is about sort of, uh, you know, platforms and about a business like your APIs and the SDKs are a business. It's not just like a, Hey, I'm going to go to market my way and then just fine. Yes. I'll integrate with you. Just if you stop asking, but no, like literally looking at it as a business opportunity. 
I think that's well said, Lee, and I think Colin and Lee, the way I, I look at this, right? What do you need to like to build a successful technology company? And right, I think like we we know how to build good tech, we built good technology, we've done that historically, I've done that, but you know, the timing needs to be right as well, right? And we could never have launched DAC five years ago, right? It wasn't possible, right? I'm not even sure we could have pulled this off three years ago. And I think timing's critical because if you look at this and the industry you're in, right, right. What do I need to make this work? What do we need at DAC, right? One, we need uh, P PMSs with open APIs. Didn't exist a few years ago, right? It was impossible, right? We couldn't integrate with these PMSs. You need enough, um, you need enough uh, locks and enough hardware that's connected to the internet. And it, there wasn't enough adoption to make this actually interesting, right? It, it, it wasn't there. And I think sort of that confluence of all these things coming together at least give this thing an opportunity. I'll throw this back to Lee and Colin. What, what, what are the things that I should be thinking about or what do I think about sort of access control and how, what are some of the ways DAC should be approaching this space? So, Well, that's a first. I appreciate that, David. <laughs> Usually it's us asking questions. So that, that, I, I appreciate that. Colin, I'll let you go first. You know, I, without, without preparation, um, <laughs> I think it, it's a very interesting time in, in, I'll say our industry, but in that, I mean, both <clears throat> the security industry as it sits today and the, the hospitality industry and the, the residential industry, right? If, if you right. take kind of all of those together, um, there's, as I was talking about earlier, there's this, this hardware need is, is going to continue to be there. But how do we bring that hardware as a part of the platform? Where does that platform sit? Um, how do we start to, to differentiate amongst other hardware? How do we differentiate within ecosystems? Um, you know, you, you've talked a lot about, you know, what good businesses do versus differentiation. And I think we're at a point right now where what is good integration versus differentiation? And, and there's a lot of players out there now, a lot of people coming into the industry. How do you balance who you partner with, who you don't partner with? How do you not be everything to everyone? And so, you know, for, for us, it's, there's a lot, there's a learning curve that has to go really, really fast. And we have to be very sound in, what we want to do as a business yeah. and how do we communicate that effectively with these potential platform partners, right? Because um, I do think that there's a, a tremendous amount of value in the platform, multi-platform collaborations, right? And in some instances, the hardware may drive stuff still to in, in the future, but we're going to need a software component to support it. And in in other instances, the software is going to drive, but they're going to need hardware to support it. And so it's, it's really about that, that collaboration. And, and I listened to a podcast a couple of weeks ago where they talked about co-opetition, right? That's the term. And, I like it. And recognizing that there's some stuff that Salto does that DAC probably does. Yeah. And, and we can't allow that to get in our way of delivering what the, the end user wants. Yeah. And so, you know, I think some of that of the, the, these middleware opportunities, everybody's got to be working together and, and, it, and it's got to be approached as a, okay, the end user wants this. In that scenario, I maybe only need to provide three quarters of my full solution because somebody else is going to do the rest. Right. And, and it's really hard, I think, for security and access control companies to understand maybe a longer term game than the short term sale. Right. And I don't want three quarters of the sale. Yeah. Well, I'll take three quarters of the sale 10 times versus the full sale one time. Right. And so as an industry, we've got to start approaching this differently and recognizing that it's not one solution isn't going to go and fit very often. Now, if it does, great, but it's, yeah. we have to start looking at this as a, an ecosystem and that ecosystem may be different from time to time, you know, and, and 
how do you find the four partners that can deliver that that full solution? Yeah, I to to, to leave, and I think that's great. I mean, definitely the creating the like one plus one equaling three opportunity, and it not not looking at the lock industry just as an integration either from that side of being like I just need access to your lock, and then you know it's it just most of them are the engagement needs to be a, I think a deeper one of an understanding of what's going on because it, the, the lock companies want to participate and, and and do that so and get a better there's that one, and then I, I you know. I don't see enough, I don't believe, of the ecosystem partners, two parts, understanding the lock businesses need, being a hardware centric uh, industry, we're used to having sales like immediately and not on the long, it's on the short. So like if we do work on something, typically that results in X amount of locks being shipped over the counter to, to somebody. Now, not saying this is the perfect way we should be managing our business, but the, I mean, it, it is the reality of what it is. So being able to figure out how to create value for the lot companies as well um, and having them participate in that and having a program for that, like a lot of ecosystem partners don't have a program for the lock companies that they work with. It's sort of like a, Hey, I've got this opportunity. You should work with me on this one opportunity. And then here's a big vision of what it's going to be. And, it may or may not happen on that end. And then uh, the other part is, is I, I think ecosystem partners need to lean toward favorites, not be exclusive. But I think it's hard to have, like you mentioned the lock, being a lock agnostic, somehow being lock agnostic, but having favorites. I agree. Where I think if you can create unique experiences with some, uh, even if it's just, a couple laps around the track first with them before it goes out to everybody. Yeah. But like creating some of those unique experiences where you lean towards a partner that helps you, there's like an added story because typically the person you're engaging with at the lock company has to go into an organization and sell why they need to work with you over somebody else or even do development work on their own stuff. Yeah. So the more that you can sort of create, that's not like, well, I've got an order for 4 million locks to go out the door since that doesn't seem to be much of what's happening right now. That's going to happen down the road. It's like, how do you help generate opportunity now? And some of that sort of like exclusive good stories, like, you know, that, that, that you can take to market to create market demand that you can do. So that to me is the sort yeah, of I think that's great. the other ones that could help. Back and great input. And uh, gentlemen, I would say this sort of the, the way, look, and I think I looked at this in my past life and the way ultimately when we sell platform, right? What's the number one thing that operators care about, right? And they really care about incremental revenue, right? How do we create incremental revenue? Everybody wants the same thing. We talk about like operational efficiency sounds good, but right, what's tangible? create revenue for me. And look, I'm, we're, I'm confident I've done, we've done this before. I've built this, I've built this before and we're building it again for this industry, right? We get guests to download the app, right? We will create incremental revenue for the operator, right? Post booking revenue, right? You think what's happened in the airline industry, right? How a lot of the revenue now comes post booking of the ticket and the same thing's coming to this industry. And I think, right? So critical getting the guest to download the app, I see access control as sort of a key gateway to this, finding the right strategic partners for us to create the best guest experience to get them to download the app, which engagement with the app, revenue for the operator. And we built a really interesting flywheel here. So Love it. Yeah. Well, thank you, David. So if somebody wants to learn more information, where's the best place for them to go? Well, I think it's right here at this podcast, but if well, not, uh, say, say, say they exhausted all of this, they, then where do they go to find out more about DAC? <laughs> well, I don't know. They, 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 as long as they have both of your cell phone numbers, we're good. And uh, if not, I would go to uh, DACinc.com, D-A-C-K-I-N-C.com. And uh, DAC, D-A-C-K is the company. Um, and excited, excited to keep talking. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's always entertaining to get the have an opportunity to do this with you. And I appreciate you taking the time and sharing thank your you. background experience and, and and trying to help with the ecosystem. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Colin. Appreciate Talk it. Again. No problem. Thank you.